Words of Money podcast, episode 54. It's like a blast from the past. Hello, hello, Words of Money listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Words of Money podcast. I'm your host, Tess Wicks, and Words of Money is a show dedicated to educating millennial women about their money. Today is such an exciting day because I have been waiting months to launch this podcast episode. It's a little bit different than ones you're used to hearing. It is a panel discussion, and it's one with three previous podcast guests, and guess what? We are talking all about love and money. These three guests sat down with me at a live event called FinCon. It's a conference for financial media makers, but it quite literally is where a lot of money nerds unite. And we no joke talk about personal finance the whole time. It's it's quite ridiculous. However, it's such a great opportunity for me to meet some of my past podcast guests and I got the opportunity to invite a couple of them to come on stage with me to record a podcast live at the event. So you're hearing about it a couple months later but I promise you it was a hoot. And we talked about that topic that is so taboo. Not only just money but money and relationships. How you integrate the finances in your relationships, whether they're new and just starting out or you've been married for years. My guests on the show are from all different relationship status backgrounds, and you'll hear more about that as we get into it. I asked them questions about how they went about approaching the money conversation in their relationships to how they wish they would have done it. They give advice on how to split bills, and especially when you're living together, and how to combine your finances when you're finally married. And we just have a really good time and laugh a lot. So you guys are going to get so much out of this. Let me quickly introduce the guests, which you'll hear right away in the beginning. They are Jessica Morehouse, who is a fellow podcaster and a blogger at jessicamorehouse.com. Her podcast is called Mo Money Podcast. Jocelyn Panita, who I just recently interviewed and is the owner of the scholarship system. And Natalie Bacon, who writes over at The Finance Girl, but has recently rebranded to nataliebacon.com so you have to go check out her website it is new and improved so you guys this is going to be super super fun i'm not going to hold you back any longer here is episode 54 balancing love and money with my live fincon panel all right hello everyone welcome we are live from the trade king podcasting stage at fincon 2016 my name is tess wicks i am the host of the words and money podcast it is a show for female millennials wanting to learn all the things there are to know about money. And today I have a lovely panel of ladies here, bloggers, course makers, and we're all financial experts, I like to say. And I'm going to have them go down the line and introduce themselves because today we're talking about being a millennial woman and being in a relationship and how we talk about money in when we're in love. <laughs> here we go. Thanks, Tess. My name's Natalie Bacon, and I blog at thefinancegirl.com. My name is Jocelyn Panina, and I own the scholarship system where we have a course. So, uh, Jessica Morehouse, uh, host of the Mo Money podcast and blogger at jessicamorehouse.com. Lovely. I consider these ladies some of my best online friends, and it's so <laughs> nice to have them here in the flesh. So we're going to talk about being in a relationship and how we deal with money, because I think this is actually going to be the coolest episode I've ever done Um, because I've never really talked I've talked about it a little bit in episodes but this is like for my audience they're going to realize that this is a a normal conversation more normal than they probably feel it is Um, so what I want to do first is we're going to go back down the line and we're going to talk about our relationship status and how long we've been in that relationship because we have a little bit of a difference here. So for the married ladies here, talk about how long you've been married and how long you've been dating. So I will start. I am in a relationship. He is just my boyfriend and we have been dating for about a year and a half. Natalie, what about you? Okay, I am dating someone, and we have been dating for a long four months. Super <laughs> long. It's never too early. <laughs> Jocelyn? I am married. We've been married for a year and a half, but we've been together for, I think, six and a half years, something like that. And 
and uh, Jessica here and married for three together for about ten or something. I don't know. That's <laughs> aren't we the ones who are supposed to keep track of I that? Know, it's like it's unclear that <laughs> they probably know and they're gonna listen and be like, How dare you? We will not care. We will not care. <laughs> or they're gonna be like, gosh, I thought it was way longer <laughs> than that. <laughs> okay, for the married ladies, when did you first start talking about money with your Big O's. Was it before or after marriage? Definitely before. My God. <laughs> Definitely before. I okay. feel like that's kind of a, you need to check the box on that before you seal the deal Absolutely. for sure. It's so important, but some people don't, don't no, do that. Don't. Mm -hmm. You're right. They don't talk about it. So how did you start? Did was it like, um, okay, we're, we think we're getting pretty serious or did you just hit the nail on the head right when you start and you're like, how much debt do you have? <laughs> that was the first date question. That, that's not okay to ask. No, no uh, for us, you know, we started dating when we were young. He just started a job. I was still in school. We were broke. And so money did come up because it's like, who's paying for dinner? Or, And so we'd have, we kind of had to know what our budgets were, how much we kind of made. Nothing specific, but we had an idea of what, we were, what our comfort levels are. And as, you know, the relationship continued, and especially when we moved in together, that's when things got really like, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at your income, your debt, and everything like that. And then when we got married, things got, yeah, more serious because, like, let's get a joint bank account and joint investments and, and stuff like that. So it definitely progresses, I think, as the relationship progresses. Yeah. For us, we, um, we love traveling. And so we actually started a travel fund together like two months in. I am I pro mean, that decision. <laughs> I love that. It, was, it was very small, but it was, I, I was in college, so I could only c commit a little bit, and he committed more. But it, we would throw in the pot, and then for fall break or for spring break, that's where we took it from. So travel is something very important to us, so we kind of just nip that in the butt right from the beginning. Yeah. But with that, that kind of started this, okay, we have this travel fund together, well, like, do you have credit card debt or what do you have? So it honestly was never a um, tough d discussion at the beginning. It was kind of just he, he, he was not very interested in finance where I was all about it. And so it was just this natural conversation. And he realized, huh, maybe I should do some of these things. And before I knew it, he was just knocking out that debt and he was out of it. I mean, he, fortunately, he didn't have much. But because of that, he didn't bring any into the marriage, which has made our marriage more about future planning. Mm -hmm. So we're still figuring it out. We're pretty early. But we did start a joint bank account. But we're still working on all the specific details for future planning. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit later about kind of what you do if you do move in together and then what you do as far as like bills go because that's when you kind of do join and then we'll also talk about like marriage and some of the options there just because I think that will be an educational experience for Natalie and I here <laughs> but Natalie what about you I mean you work in finance so you kind of it's natural for you you write about it so how did have you ingrained it into your relationship yeah, we already talk about money, but it's very casual and it's uh, very easy. And I try to make a point to pay attention to people who I'm dating and what their money habits are early on. And you can really tell a lot about someone and how they behave with money without asking questions. Um, how much of a spender they are, mm -hmm. if they you know make jokes about credit card debt or, or just little yeah. things. I mean, people tell you a lot about themselves without you having to sit down and say, tell me you know, your deepest, darkest money secrets. And I found that, I mean, with the person I'm dating now, he is more frugal than I am. And every time he's, you know, <laughs> quote unquote cheap, I'm like, oh my gosh, babe, that's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughs. He's like, oh, most people think that's really cheap. <laughs> I'm like, I, I love it. He's so good with tell money. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, right. well, how much did you save? <laughs> uh, he's just a natural saver and I'm a natural spender, but I'm such a money nerd. So it actually has been so easy for us to just be very open about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he has like enjoyed how much I love money too, because he knows I'm not going to be this crazy spender and reckless with money, even though I like to shop and girl things. You yeah, know? So it's definitely. been really easy. Awesome. And I mean, for you... So there's always kind of that little iffy moment of how much do you make, but also the one of like how much debt do you have? And your stuff is out there. It's online, so you can't really avoid that. Yeah, and I think it's different when you have debt, but you're doing something about it versus like, oh, I have debt and I'm, you know. I'm pretending uh, it's not. Yeah, debt. and I'm like hiding it. And before I even started dating this person, and I've been in relationships before since my debt, and it's never been an issue. And 
the guys are always like super impressed with my blog and what I'm doing with it and how I'm getting out of it. So it's never been a negative. Um, it's, it's always been a positive in a weird way. So that's actually been easy. And even the income conversations are always easy. I just find that if you're open about money, like other people are open about money too. So I talk about how much I make and he talks about what he makes and it's never been a problem for us. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about something that's a little woo woo. It's kind of like money blocks and stuff because I've noticed in my relationship with my, my boyfriend is kind of the, the, ways we grew up and we grew up in very different we grew up across the country from each other we grew up in very different households and it's played a big role in how we both handle our money or even approach the conversation so have you noticed that in your significant other and like did you ever ask them what money was like growing up for them and how or do you just kind of infer like oh based on meeting their in-laws we can talk in-laws you know this now that Will this makes be so much sense yeah. <laughs> I won't send this to them oh my gosh um yeah no so we had kind of similar backgrounds both of our parents were very frugal and so we both but we definitely kind of I think took that into adulthood very differently. For me, I always wanted kind of to continue that and really focus on, okay, I wasn't, you know, as a family, we weren't, we weren't able to afford certain things because we had, they had three kids, they got married really young, there just wasn't any money. I want to be able to make enough money so I can experience those things. Where And so I'm, I'm the saver in the family, obviously. And my husband, similar situation where his mom is very, very frugal and there's, you know, lots of things like they didn't eat out that much and, and, and vacations, it was always in the RV kind of thing. But he's more of the spender. So it's like he's almost kind of, I think, trying to make up for, yeah, that lack, of, but he's spending. He's still very good with his money, and I think I do have to play a part in that. I don't know. You know, I wonder how his, you know, kind of spender personality would have kind of gone if it weren't for me and us talking about it. But, yeah, I feel like now, especially since we've, and we'll probably talk about this later, like we are all about, like, what are our mutual goals? How can we help each other get there? then we kind of balance out the saver spender. So I'm not nagging him, be like, what are you, you know, spending your money on? And he's not just like, can you loosen up? Because we need to buy some stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, that's funny. So I would say almost the same thing with us where our families, we come from pretty similar backgrounds, but we went two different ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I went from the family that did not really focus on budgets or anything like that they're not very financially savvy. And I went completely into finance. I was like, oh my goodness, I want to be focused on it. I want to know what I'm doing and all that stuff. For him, he comes from a similar background, but I think he's kind of picked up some of those those traces um, of what they did as well. He, I don't give him enough credit. He really is good with money. He's just not as intentional as where me, I needed a plan where he just does fine, you know? Yeah. So he saves, but he's like, at the end of the month, he's like, yeah, I saved. Like, you know, it's a, it's, I just saved in general where me, I'm like, wait, I needed to save down. Like I know how much I needed to save, you know? So, so I don't give him enough credit because he's not as planned out like me, but he is pretty well disciplined. So it, it's really funny. We come from very similar backgrounds and yet we've kind of just gone the opposite way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, some of it did come down to meeting the in-laws and being like, Oh, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And our parents get along very well. So <laughs> well, <laughs> you can tell good. that we have similar backgrounds. <laughs> Natalie. Yeah. So, so I, fresh, but I know. You've, you've met them, right? I have met All them right. twice. And actually it, it's, it explains a lot because, <laughs> well, they're farmers and they are so good with their money. Oh my goodness. And it's, it's uh, a farmer thing. It is, yeah. Shout out to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just really, really good with money. And it makes so much sense to me because he's you know, he doesn't know all the technical like rules of finance like I would know from my CFP or money background, but he's just so good with naturally saving and being frugal, and he totally gets that from his upbringing. Whereas me, I my family is just you know very middle class, never talked about money, and my mom is a shopper and spender, and I sort of get that from her. But like you were saying, Jocelyn, I sort of went the other way completely and wanted to become this like money nerd and know everything I could about money so I could have like a different path for my family and myself right mm -hmm. yeah exactly it's really interesting how you can come from two similar backgrounds and go opposite directions and also like the way you grew up around money does impact what you've become but it doesn't necessarily mean like because I grew up this way I turned out this way it's it's really how you in I don't know individually 
get what you get out of it, I guess, from well, as, growing up. That's even like with siblings. I mean, my siblings are different, and yet we were raised the same way. Exactly. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. I agree. So, I, okay, let's talk about the next step, which is moving in. And bef before we end, I want to know, like, how you, if you had, had to go about it again, how would you do it better? Um, because we're not all perfect, especially what? when it comes to this. But but next step, we'll go we'll go keep moving forward with like okay, moving in. That's when you really start to be like, okay, someone makes more in this relationship, or and maybe you're pretty equal. But if there is a difference, how do you balance that? Do you just split bills in half? Do you, you know, base it off of income? Yeah. What's that all about? I yeah. mean, this is just going to be completely from uh, knowledge that I've read. And well, you work about. with people, yeah, too. So. But <laughs> I actually, you know, just from listening and watching Susie Orman answer questions like this a lot on her show back in the day when I would <laughs> first get into money, I really am a big believer in, like, the percentage way of doing it versus 50-50, um, especially if there's, like, a really big gap. Uh, hopefully, if you're moving in together, you know each other well enough to have had these conversations. And so if, you know someone makes a lot more money than the other person, I would be pro splitting it up percentage wise. Like maybe, uh, you know, it's not 50, 50, maybe it's 60, 40 or whatever it is just to, because I think that's more fair personally. Um, but if the incomes are pretty close, then it might just be easier to do it. 50, 50, yeah. Yeah. like you owe 54. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Down where's that three dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I we actually we did a similar. We did a percentage, but it was hard because I was starting up the scholarship system, and so I actually technically I left my corporate job. So I really I had this nest that I was planning on living off of until whatever was going to get started. So, but I still was so bullheaded. I was like, no, you're not, you're not paying a hundred percent. No, but we did do like 60, 40, I think is, is what it was. So he, he we gave did you a little it. bit of something so you could, <laughs> you could take your leap. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he knows that I'd freak out if I just saw my savings go down, even though technically that's what it was for. He knew inside I couldn't do it. I'm so the exact same way. <laughs> <laughs> I just like looking at, you know, <laughs> Yeah, for me and my husband, when we moved in together, we were kind of making the same amount, and so we did just do 50-50 split. Um, but we were really, I was pretty adamant, especially, that I didn't really want money moving in together to really change what we had going on. We got a good thing going on. Let's continue it. And so we didn't do, like, a joint account or joint anything. So basically, I was kind of the money manager. And, you know, because you do have to go into bills together and set up, you know, um, all those accounts together. And so we would usually charge it to uh, maybe some uh, on his credit card, some on mine. Then we'd every month look through everything. And then he basically he would give me a breakdown of what um, each other we owe each other. Usually it was, you know, he owes me or I owe him or whatever. It wasn't necessarily like, the easiest way to do things, but it was the only way I could figure it out at the time. Like, we won't be fighting about money because it's very kind of 50-50. But the thing is... You even though we were 50-50, we made money differently. I had a salary job, he's a freelancer, and so his money was just like very up and down, and so he had a budget differently than I did. But yeah, it, it worked out, and then we definitely changed things once we uh, married, just because, you know, like, mm, that doesn't really work for us anymore. We need yeah. to figure something out that works for us better. Good to know. So we talked, oh, Natalie had something to say. <laughs> well, I was just gonna ask you, what about you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys do? Well, we live in separate households, but this is an interesting thing because I own my condo. And so if my boyfriend moves in with me, he'll technically be paying me rent. And I'm having such a hard time being like, should I charge him the full rate or should I give him a discount? Discount. I'm, it's, I'm so torn. And yeah, yeah I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. The other one is like, okay, when you're married or when you move in together, you obviously, like, share you share food. Yeah. And yeah. my boyfriend eats a lot yes. of food. Yes. Like, how, do, how is that okay. even fair? Yes, how do you do that? So that was actually, I think food was where I was like, yeah, you're doing 60-40. Like, <laughs> like, food was a major part of, like, that split. I think we do 80-20 for food. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. It's insane. I eat so much. I eat, like, I eat a pound of, like, you know, ground, if I have ground beef, I'll eat a whole pound over the week. He'll yeah. eat it in one, in one night. Sitting? Yeah. yeah, your budget, once you move together, you need to readjust. Like, I, I was like, where is all this money going? And then I realized it was groceries, and I'm like, w what? You know, so, yeah, it, it definitely takes an adjustment. So, f food is a big difference with... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that we... Yeah. 
we go into groceries together on things that we will mutually eat, but if we want, or if we need something extra, we want something that the other person's not getting, we're like, that's on you. So that's come from your yeah. personal account. Yeah. And so far, that's like my rosé. I have to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, and he yeah. might drink it, but like I'll my pay wine. for it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> or like whenever I just deny that we get desserts, but we always get desserts. So Donnie just pays for them, and then I feel like we didn't buy them, but I eat them. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, I didn't pay for them. It's fine. Right. It never right. happened. <laughs> exactly. It's not on my mint account. That's cheese and wine for me. <laughs> yeah. So okay, we we covered the moving in together a little bit, and then marriage. This is from a marriage expert. Um, <laughs> what are different ways that you can combine your money? And then after we talk about those and spit out all the different ways and then talk about kind of what you've experienced with. Yeah. Experimented. You want to go first? Um, yeah, since I'm newer, I because I feel like you're going to have a better solution. So I'm still figuring this out. But I've seen, so throwing out just things that I've seen. So some people just go all in and they just combine and I think there's a beauty in that because you're a team and you're in it together. But in the other hand, it's different times where women are now independent. And mm -hmm. I think women are becoming financially savvy if they're listening to all of you ladies. Um, but, but ultimately, girls, I think women are having larger nests of their own money now going into things. So I've also seen where you go in together starting then. So you guys kind of have whatever you saved before. That's your fun money, your side. Yeah. But from now on, you, could, you consolidate. You're like, I've been saving this baby's her money for exactly. so long and it's been compounding at one percent interest for yeah. so long in my savings account no. yeah like i haven't touched it i can't transfer it to something else are you insane it's sentimental yeah <laughs> well not only that but i've seen a situation where someone had a large inheritance and it was hers from oh. a family so you know if you have three hundred thousand dollars and you know, if you combine it, that's marital money now. And yeah. you might just want to keep that separate. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I hate to say it, but I mean, you never know what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. who is going to get the short end of the stick if something does? It's typically the female. And I've also seen that where women are so financially dependent on their significant other. And then they're kind of trapped a little bit. So hopefully the listeners don't, you know, they're, they're making their own thing. They're driving forward and that won't be them. But just in case, I think there's also that kind of, I've just seen it happen yeah. a few times. So, so those were two things. And then I guess the third way is kind of having a mutual pot where you're doing your 60, 40, but everything else you keep set, like you just keep your own. Yeah. So you figure out how much you guys want to put together. And this is actually, to, this is what we've been doing, but mm -hmm. we're thinking about combining more, but we've kind of said, okay, we need X amount every month. All right. 60, 40 split and whatever's left over, you can do whatever you want with it. So. So why would you decide to make the change? I think that camaraderie, that team, like, I would, I love it, and maybe it's just the idea, but I just love the idea of being a full 100% team. You know, mm -hmm. we're in it together, we're, and, and retiring together, and building wealth together. You know, Smart Couples Finish Rich, that book. So it, it's just like, I think that if you can play your cards right and really work together, you're going to build wealth way faster faster than if you're keeping your things separate. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of the what's intriguing me right now. But I haven't figured we haven't decided yet. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jessica? We yeah, so you know, when we were living together and dating, it was completely separate. And then when we got married, and also we, we did a, a big change after we got married. We quit our jobs and we moved cities and started anew. And so we really like needed to readjust like what was going on with our finances. And so we kind of came to, okay, we'll have a joint savings account for um, things that we will need to save up for, whether it be you know, a joint trip or something breaks in our place, furniture, whatever, joint checking account for all of our regular bills. But everything else we've keep separate, and we've actually been talking about should we combine our investments because right now we have, you know, they're all separate, and it's just like that's just how it's always been. So that's definitely something that we're going to look into. But so far for us, I mean, honestly, I can't, like we've never had an argument about money, and it could just be because we've always kind of been at the same income level, and we have this kind of structure. But sort of like the the together but separate has worked for us. Mm -hmm. But again, like we also don't have kids, and I know say we do yeah. have a family. That's when things change and you may have to be like I think we have to be a little bit more combined you can't be like all right you owe me this amount for <laughs> I bought the, the diapers so yeah, exactly. like, that's where <laughs> Your it gets turn. complicated we're kind of a, a bit lucky that we're just you know just him and me and it's we keep it very simple I think that's the key thing is 
keep it simple and also just always know what the other person's up to and what's going on. We talk about money all the time. Obviously, yeah. I have a podcast. It's a, a little blog. easier. I kind of bring us. it up a few times a day, whatever. But I think once, yeah, once you're always kind of in the loop, then it, that that's very very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. th the important thing is to keep your finger on the pulse and make sure yes. both people are in it. I like that when you, Jessica, explained how you kind of sit down and like l really lay it all out. And it, oh, yeah, I almost, I'm meetings. imagining you two like playing your finances like you play a board game. Yeah, I mean, he, never, he never wants to play, but I make him. <laughs> like it's money meeting time. Here's my Google sheet. He's like, okay. I, I bribe my husband. Yeah, I'm like, we can get dessert wine, after. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we yeah, get you dessert. Gotta bribe after. them a little bit, but yeah, it's it's yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So we're going to go back to the dating um, mm -hmm. and, and having that conversation. So how do you approach that conversation? If you had to approach it again and do yeah. it better, like when would you start talking about it? Mm -hmm. When would you, how would you ask? Because you can't just go up and be like, all right, dude, you got to tell me your salary. Yeah. But yeah. like, how do you? <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> <laughs> that, those are debt it's and not salary. what's your name, what's your salary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how do you approach that conversation? I mean, what? How would you go about it, Natalie? We're gonna start with you mm -hmm. since you're over here social mediaing. I'm yeah. interrupting you now. I really, uh, <laughs> it's really just, you know, I, over time I'll have said what I make, and then I'll just add, I'll just say, you know, oh, what are you making now, or what? It's it's never like awkward sitting at dinner like so I need to know how much money you make it's right a, it's just like a casual thing that will come up at the right time and I don't like beat around the bush like some people will be like well you know based on whatever you make and you know it's like this yeah. awkward taboo thing I just make sure it's not taboo right so it'll be a conversation I'll make sure I'm open about it first that way it's not like I don't have an agenda I'm just wanting to be open about money and this is just something I talk about and I want mm -hmm. it to be um just not taboo so as yeah. part of that I make sure it's appropriate but I also make sure not to hide it and just be open so yeah mm -hmm. um but obviously we've only been dating four months and I know how much he makes and like you know if he's looking for another job which he sort of is now and got an offer I'll just be like oh you know how, how much was the offer for like I just make let's strategize this. yeah well right <laughs> and it's like a positive conversation and that's how I always want money to be it's a positive conversation it's not a reflection of you it's just um you know, I took a pay cut of 50 percent and uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I, kind of we're cool. also we're Snapchatting and. right now, you guys, so <laughs> follow us on social media. <laughs> um, no, I took a pay cut of 50 percent when I quit uh, <laughs> being a I lawyer. Can. So oh. I and it was very intentional. So I'm just very open about salary and, and money. And I think that that's that's how everyone should be. So yeah. I don't hide mm -hmm. it. I think when you do would go through that humbling phase of taking a pay, pay cut, then you're more like, hey, guess what? Like, yeah. now I make this. Exactly. And I'm just going to be frank with you exactly. because yeah. I need you to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, that, yeah, sorry. You know, you go. I just, I just remembered when me and my husband were dating, there was a point where I lost my job and I'm like, oh my gosh, like we were just even for the whole, a couple years. And then I remember going out to dinner. I'm like, I think this is going to be our last dinner for a while because I don't, I don't have any income. And that was definitely, I think, one of our first really serious conversations besides who's fronting the bill. And I'm like, so if we're going to go out, like we stay in or are you okay paying? And then I'll pay you back when I get a new job. But I, I feel like with when you are starting dating and it is always I think hard for people to know how to broach the subject you don't want it to be weird or inauthentic you know sometimes you'd be like you know I've been reading this blog about finance <laughs> oh that's a good that? one I it heard this good? podcast and these <laughs> girls were talking about money and you their have boyfriends in the background be like hey what do you think about this I mean I do that all the time with my husband when I'm reading a financial book be like you know I just read this book and they talked about this what do you think about that do you think yeah. this or this or whatever so you can kind of bring it up like that, that or when there way. is something that's going on in your life, you're like, something's changed in my financial, you know, life. Uh, this may affect us. Can we talk about finance? Yes. Yeah. We have we have a few more seconds left. Jocelyn? My, my only thing I was going to say is regardless, I th I've seen Donnie go from not my husband. I keep saying, talking like <laughs> oh everyone my gosh. knows him. He's oh been God. exposed. <laughs> <laughs> his, his identity is public. We're oh going to no. go undercover. Um, but I mean, I've seen his salary from low to now it's twice as much. And it that never really mattered. What mattered was that we had a plan and that we were intentional and that, you know, as long as you guys are open about it. So again, not having that conversation that's taboo, but being open about it. So even if they did take a pay cut, it's okay because you guys have this, this rhythm, you have this plan whatever it is so 
It doesn't matter how much, as long as you know what you're doing with it. So. Yeah, just just act like it's super cash. <laughs> Although if you won a million dollars, I mean, that's positive. fine. If you win the lottery, you're <laughs> probably, you probably should probably tell them. I or complain. not tell them and just like <laughs> skip town. <laughs> you, have, you have two <laughs> options. But you need to know if they win the lottery, so you have to True. talk, talk so, about right. money early yeah. on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, this has been so fantastic. Jessica, Jocelyn, Natalie, thank you so much for joining me on the Words of Money podcast. We're live from the Trade King podcasting stage at FinCon 2016. We're out. Thanks for having us. us. All right, my friends, that is that. That's all I have for you today on the Words of Money podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please go to iTunes and leave a rating and a review. It was one of my favorites to date uh, just because it was girl talk. I want to know from you, do you talk to your girlfriends about money or at least about how you talk to your significant others about money? I have to know. If you have any tips, please leave them. Go to testwix.com slash podcast slash episode 54 and leave me a comment. Also, when you're there, you can get the links to the previous episodes that I've recorded with all three of these guests, as well as links to their website so you can find all the details. Also, while you're there, I want to take a second. We're wrapping up the year here at Words of Money, and I wanted to make sure that you knew about a great deal that I have going on for my one-on-one coaching. If you're looking for someone to hold you accountable, to help you sort through that debt, help you figure out where that student loan debt is, maybe you forgot about it and now you need to get it out of wherever it is or figure out if you have it or figure out how much you have. These are normal problems, you guys, and I want to help you. I know that tackling your money can be difficult and overwhelming and you need a partner. And if you want that partner to be me, I am here for you. So go to my website when you're at the show notes that you go to. Just go up to work with me and to the one-on-one coaching. You can sign up for a 30-minute free discovery call. We'll talk about what you want, what your goals are, what where you want your money to be in the next year, and, and talk about what's, what's going on. Plus, I just want to chat with you. I love talking to my listeners. So head over to testwix.com to get all the good stuff over there. And you guys, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye-bye. What? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. See how they did it? They were kind of cash and didn't jump in the bike. So, that's I'm just soups excited. I didn't like how it was quiet. Soups excited. Yeah.